Facebook audience. I don't think you can see me yet. Hey there to my Facebook audience. Prophet David Taylor here. It's Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's why I'm here, to give you a live prophetic word. And as always, I pray out here and ask what the Holy Spirit wants me. Hey, read, there we go, Periscope. That's what the Holy Spirit wants me to convey to the body of Christ, because if the Lord ain't saying nothing, I'm not saying nothing. And uh, I am really seeing the necessity these days for strong anointed Bible teaching, for strong doctrinal teaching, and for everybody to be sure they're making their calling and election sure, to really be sure that they know the Lord for themselves. Because there's a lot of crazy teaching out here now. There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of, just a lot of crazy stuff that I've never seen in my lifetime that's out here now. So before we get into the lesson, I'm going to say what I always say, you know, know God for yourself, know his word for yourself, study the scriptures for yourself, ask God to reveal himself to you personally. It doesn't mean that you're just off somewhere in a corner and don't nobody know the Lord but you, and you don't need to fellowship with a church or be under the authority of a pastor because you do. Okay. And I'm not talking about that, but I'm saying the bottom line is like Peter said on the day of Pentecost, Save yourself from this untoward generation. Like the scripture says, make your calling and election sure. Okay? Because there's just a lot of stuff out here now. But anyway, so that actually kind of ties into what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to talk about today is a continuation of what I talked about last weekend on Father's Day. Last week on Father's Day, if you watched the video from last Sunday, I talked about my image. And we talked about, uh, that was the title, My Image, and God was relaying to us that he wants to heal our image of him. Because many times we are carrying a wrong image of God inside of us as Christians. Now, many times uh, Christians get confused as to how we work as people. There's three parts to us as humans. There's your spirit. That's the breath of life inside of you. <sighs> That's that. Okay, and that's also the part of you that the Holy Ghost dwells in. There's your soul. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. And that's the part that also houses so much of your personality. All of your memories, all your decision-making power, and everything you've ever thought and felt. That comes through your soul. Then there's your body, your shell, your clay body, the part that your inner man, you know, walks around in. Okay? Many times God will give us uh, parallels in the natural. God will give us analogs. God will give us similes uh, and things of comparison in the natural so we can understand spiritual things. God will take things we can see to help us to understand things we can't see. And what you need to understand about this teaching I'm doing now is I actually have a scar. I don't know if you can see it. I actually have a scar. Not that. Uh, it's underneath my watch right there. I got that scar a long time ago. I got that scar in 1985. Uh, and there it is right there. It's still there. It doesn't hurt when I touch it, but it marked my body. Okay? It marked my skin. Okay? So I still have that, that burn because I got it from an oven. I still have that burn. I don't know if I can make you see it. I still have that burn right there. Okay? And so I'm saying that to say that our spirits and our souls are the exact same way. You can get a mark or a burn or an injury in your spirit and carry it with you for the rest of your life and not even know that you're hurting. You can get a mark or an injury or a scar in your soul, in your mind and or your will and or your emotions and not even know that you're scarred, not even know that you're hurting. So why is that relevant? That's relevant because what God wants to do with this teaching I've been doing uh, last week and this week is to heal our image of him. Because it's entirely possible to have a somewhat unhealthy image of God or a completely false image of God, or it's entirely possible to be accurate in some areas, to be right in some areas, and be totally off in others. And I know for a lot of Christians, they think, that that can't happen. And the reason they think that can't happen is because God is perfect. But we ain't talking about God. We're talking about us. 
Okay? We ain't talking about God's perfection. Of course God is perfect. Of course God is flawless. Of course he's all those things. But we're talking about us. Okay? And you can get wounded in your spirit. You can get wounded in your soul. You can clearly get wounded on your body. And just like your body has a healing process, just like your body needs to heal so you can function, your soul needs to heal so you can function, and so does your spirit. Okay? So I can't stress that enough. So that's why uh, some people, the teachings and the understanding and the image of God that they have right, they're powerful in, but then there's some parts that they just have wrong that they need healing in. And I've discovered for a lot of Christians, they won't even acknowledge that or they don't even understand that. They don't even understand that it's entirely possible to know, uh, you know, because the dimensions of God are infinite. It's entirely possible to know God in one dimension and you're on point in that dimension. But in other dimensions of God, you are off. You've got a wrong image. You've got a wrong uh, set of ideas. You're scarred in that area. And you know how I know that's true? Because it's true for us personally, okay? There are some dimensions of your life, some dimensions of your soul that you're totally comfortable with, that you're in sync with, that, you know, you like for other people to see that are really, really good. And there's some parts of you that sometimes you don't even know that you're scarred in that area and something happens and it triggers you. And something comes out of you that you didn't even know was there a childhood memory or a memory from a bad breakup or something that's been building up for a while and you didn't even know it was there. That's your own soul and you didn't even know. So if you can't always see every dimension of your own soul, then how in the world can you think that we're always on point about every dimension of God? Some dimensions we're on point on. Like some people have a revelation of his love. Some people have a revelation of his holiness. Some people have a revelation of his righteousness. Some people have a revelation of his justice. Some people have a revelation of his provision. Okay? And if you've got a revelation in a certain dimension of God, you can be on point. But there are other dimensions to God, just like there's other dimensions to us, and you can be totally off. Okay? So again, God wants to heal us, wants to heal our image of him. And so the scripture that he had me start with was the famous uh, love verses in 1 Corinthians 13, or the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. So what I'm going to do today, the Spirit of God pointed out a particular verse in that chapter that he wants me to focus on, because there's quite a bit to say about it, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to focus on 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6. In the King James Bible, it says, Love rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. In the Berean Study Bible, it says, Love takes no pleasure in evil, but rejoices in the truth. In the New International Version, it says, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Okay? So let's examine that. Now, that phrase when it says, love takes no pleasure in evil, the Greek word there is kairo. Kairo, and it means to rejoice or to be glad. Uh, and it means to lean towards favor favorably. So in other words, the Bible is saying there that God does not rejoice and God is not glad in evil. Now let's look up what that word says. That word evil there out of the Greek is the word Adikia, Adikia, and it means unrighteousness, injustice, or hurt, okay? And so that first phrase tells us that God does not rejoice in injustice, God does not rejoice in unrighteousness, and God does not rejoice in hurt. Stop right there. We could do a whole thing just on that phrase right there, because I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the times that you yourself have blamed God or some type of pain or some type of devastation or some type of loss in your life. Okay, but the Bible says that love does not take pleasure. God is not rejoicing in injustice. When we experience injustice in, in this world, that comes from the devil. That comes from sin, the fact that sin is here. We live in a sin-cursed world. 
And that comes from wicked people. And sometimes it comes from the wickedness in our own hearts. Okay? It doesn't come from God. God is not happy. He's not rejoicing when injustice is done. I want you to think about that. Because if you had a rough childhood, if you had an abusive childhood, you might be blaming God. You might be saying, why God, why? And why would you let that happen to me? And if you're so loving, how come that happened to me? The answer to that question is your parents or the wicked people or the devil or demons, they did that to you. Okay, not God. And he's not rejoicing in that injustice. He's not rejoicing in that unrighteousness. He's not happy that that evil occurred to you. Okay, so you, we need to get that straight. We need to understand that God is not behind that kind of stuff, nor is he happy when it happens. If that's the case, then why does it happen? It happens because human beings have free will. And it happens because you have to invite God into a situation. He does not barge into a situation. So in a very practical sense, what I mean by that is, if you want God to be with your kids and you want God to watch over your kids, uh, one of our prophets was just talking about that this morning in church. You have to pray and fast and ask the Lord. You have to keep your child before the throne of God. You have to ask God to get involved. God does not butt his way into a family. God does not butt his way into a life. Okay? God might call you, but you have to answer the call. God does not force. Okay? But the devil is a beast. The devil will force. The devil doesn't have any problem attacking pregnant women, attacking babies, attacking the helpless. All the ugly things that you see, that's the devil. Okay? And so God takes no pleasure in those things. So we need to heal our image of the Lord by understanding that if you have been abused in any way, God is not happy about it. God takes no pleasure in it. And God didn't cause it. That was the devil or the demons or some wicked person that did that to you. Okay? So we want to get that imagery straight. And then it goes on to say, but love rejoices in the truth. Now that word that rejoices, that word is sunkairo. Sunkairo. And it means rejoice, rejoice with, I rejoice with, or congratulate. So in other words, God does rejoice with and God does congratulate the truth. Let's look at that word truth there coming out of the Greek. That word truth there is aletheia. Aletheia. And it means truth, but not merely truth that's spoken, but truth of an idea, reality, sincerity, truth in the moral sphere, divine truth revealed to man and straightforwardness. Wow. That's a lot packed into that word truth. Again, that Greek word is aletheia. That's Strong's Concordance number 225. Aletheia is the Greek word. It means truth, but not merely truth as, smoke, as spoken. Truth of ideas, reality, sincerity, truth in the moral sphere, divine truth revealed to man as straightforwardness. So God rejoices in all that. So you think about that. Because you need to, we need to be sure that our image of God is healed. We need to understand when God is happy and when God rejoices in so God rejoices in spoken truth, but God rejoices when the ideas are true. When the ideas are right, God rejoices. When we're dealing with reality, God rejoices. When we're sincere, God rejoices. When we have truth in the moral sphere, so when we have right morals, God rejoices with that. Divine truth revealed to man. So when God gives us a revelation, when God gives us an epiphany, when God gives us a prophetic word, he's rejoicing with that. And then straightforwardness. In other words, as we would say, keeping it a hundred. <laughs> okay, keeping it real. God rejoices when we keep it real. See, so you need to have that proper image of God in your head. So now you can begin to see that anything that falls outside of that realm of truth as defined by the Bible is not from God. And God's not happy about it. So that should give you more armor with which to rebuke the devil. So let me give you those words again. So if something is untrue, that's the devil or wicked people. If something is, and we're just not talking about spoken truth, if the ideas are not right, that's not from God. If it's, if it's not in reality, 
Okay, if it's just some type of some type of stuff that we just made up and we're pretending that is true, that's not from God and God does not rejoice in that. If it's insincere, God does not rejoice in that. If it's immoral, if it's outside of truth in the moral sphere, if it's bad morals, God does not rejoice in that. If it's anything other than his divinely revealed truth, Okay, if if it's, uh, let me look that scripture up. I want to give you that scripture. It's in Timothy, and it is 2 Timothy 2.15. And that is, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If the Bible says you've got to rightly divide the word of truth, that means it's possible to wrongly divide the word of truth. Okay, and we see that in Matthew 4. When Jesus was in the wilderness, when the devil tempted him, he quoted a scripture at him. Okay? That was a wrong division of the word of truth. That's why I started out the broadcast by saying, there's so much out there now that is just bad teaching. So the Bible says that divine truth revealed to man. God is not happy when people are, are coming up with these revelations that are not actually from God. Okay, God is not rejoicing in that. That's messing up people's lives. Okay, it's messing up people's lives when people are giving you bad teaching, teaching that is not biblical, teaching that is not based on scripture, teaching that cannot be validated by life, and teaching that is not anointed and witnessed to by the Holy Ghost. Because you do have some tools by which to discern and determine whether or not something is true. Okay? And if it's scripture-based, if it's the rightly divided word of truth, the Spirit of God will anoint it and put His power behind it. And the Spirit of God will give a witness to let you know that what you're hearing is from God and that it's true. Okay? And then also uh, straightforwardness. So that means that when people are hemming and hawing, when they're obfuscating, when they're doing a shell game, when they're changing their mind, when they're playing mind games with you. God ain't in that, and God is not rejoicing in that. Because the Bible says right there that God rejoices in straightforwardness. Keeping it a hundred, telling it like it is. That's what God rejoices in. Okay? My father taught me when I was, uh, when I used to work with him, my father was an entrepreneur, and he had several businesses, and his last business was uh, a retail store, uh, what, we, what we would call a mom and pop shop, and I worked with him in it. And my father taught me that when you're waiting on people and you're dealing with a cash transaction and people keep trying to switch denominations in the middle of the transaction, they're scamming you. So if they say, give you five, no, wait, I'm sorry, it's a 10, no, wait, here's a 20, no, I'm sorry if it's five, no, wait, it's 10. And they keep doing stuff like that. They're trying to confuse you, so you end up giving them more change than what they do. They're scamming you. Okay, so my father taught me that slow down, stop, put your hand on the money, stop. <laughs> And look at the denomination to be sure that you're giving the right change. So the Bible says, so I say that to say that the Bible says that Father God re rejoices in straightforwardness. Keeping it real. Straightforward. A straight line. Straightforward. Not all this. When you when you got to start doing all that, that's not God. When you got to add spin. Spin ain't from God. God don't spin. That's us. That's people. Or that's the devil. Truth don't need no spin. Truth is its own reason. Truth is its own, truth is its own defense. Okay? Truth is its own answer. You don't have to spin the truth. You can just tell the truth. Okay? You don't have to cover up the truth. You don't have to off, you don't have to obfuscate. You don't have to do a shell game with the truth. Truth can just stand there right, right by itself and testify by itself. That's God. That's what God rejoices in. You understand? So that's, you know, one of the weapons you can use when people are trying to say whatever it is they're trying to say. If they got to put some spin on it, if they got to dance around it, if they got to play verbal games, okay, chances are likely, likelihood that it, what they're talking about ain't true. Because truth can do that right there. Truth can just be straightforward like that. Truth can just stand there and testify by itself. It doesn't need spin. Okay? And that's where God is, and that's where God rejoices. Okay? Okay, so let's do a quick review, and then we'll do a closing prayer. So today we focused on 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 6. 
uh, which says, love takes no pleasure in evil, but rejoices in the truth. So that we looked up that word evil, it says injustice, unrighteousness, okay, anything that's wrong. God does not take pleasure in injustice and unrighteousness. When you see some of the horrific things that are done upon the earth, many times we say, why God, why? I stop by to tell you, that is not God. That's the devil, that's demons, that's the sin curse, and that's wicked people. That's where that comes from. That's not the Lord. He is not happy about it. He is not rejoicing in it. It says right there in the scripture, God takes no pleasure in evil. Okay? But God does take pleasure in the truth. And I just we just looked at what that word means and all the different breakdowns of what that word means in terms of the different kinds of truths or the different kinds of truth, different dimensions of truth that God rejoices in. Okay? So again, our message today is healing. Healing our image of God. So now you know from a scriptural foundation, from a scriptural basis, that when you see evil, injustice, untruth, that God is not happy about it. He's not rejoicing in it. He's not in that. And when you see, let me, let's look at it one more time. When you see truth spoken, when you see true ideas, reality, sincerity, moral truths, uh, properly uh, exegeted divine revelation and straightforwardness, God's happy with that. See that? So now that should help begin to clear up your image of God in that dimension. Okay? Now I got a prophetic word I need to release on that. For behold, my people, the days come where more and more false doctrine, and yea, now is, where more and more false doctrine is being disseminated and more and more lies are being told about me says God, but I want you to know me for yourself. I want you to know my word. I want you to know my voice. And I want you to know me for yourself so that we can be intimate and we can walk together because I want to walk with you and talk with you and I want to be your God and I want you to be my child. So come to me, draw close to me, study my word, spend time with me, learn my presence, learn my voice, and you shall know me for yourself. And as you continue in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Now, that was encouraging to me, okay? So I got blessed by that. I hope that was a blessing to you too. If there are any prayer requests, put them on the screen. Otherwise, I'm just going to pray a closing prayer. Any prayer requests from anybody? Are we good? Okay. All right. Great. So again, I hope that word was a blessing to you. We're going to pray and close out. Thank you, God, for your rightly divided word. Thank you, God, for you being a God that rejoices in the truth. Thank you, God, for helping us to understand that when there is injustice in this world, when there is unrighteousness, that you are not happy. You are not leaning towards that. You are not disposed towards that. You are not happy. You are not in it. And that you are rejoicing and happy when there was straightforwardness, when there was right morals, when there was your rightly divided word, when there was revelation that truly is from you, when we have right ideas. So thank you, God, for healing us in that area and help us to continue to walk in this healing and this dimension of you so we can have the right idea about you in all dimensions of our lives and get the victory in all things by hearing, believing, and obeying you. And we thank you for it. We believe you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. All right. I will be here same time uh, next weekend. Uh, next weekend, uh, uh, Sunday, uh, Central Standard Time, 2.30 p.m. Uh, the 4th of July is on Wednesday, so I'm definitely planning on broadcasting, uh, you know, during the whole holiday weekend or whatever. So 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time next Sunday, I'll be here with a prophetic word and teaching. All right. God bless you. Uh, remember, God is healing your image of him. So walk in that. Believe it. Own it. And uh, let it bless you. And I'll see you same time next week. Thanks. God bless.